shorter form of family morning prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who hast safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant to us, Lord, we beseech thee, the spirits to think and do always such things as are right, that we who cannot do anything that is good without thee may by thee be enabled to live according to thy will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Jonah 2. Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish, saying, I called out to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight. Yet I shall again look upon your holy temple. The waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped about my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet you brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. When my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came to you, into your holy temple. Those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love. But with a voice, I with a voice of thanksgiving will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah out upon the dry land. So the past couple of weeks, uh, I've been reading the Jurassic Park books uh, and watching the Jurassic Park movies. I don't really know why, just there it is. Uh, and I love all of it. Uh, and I especially love the character of Ian Malcolm, uh, played, of course, immortally by Jeff Goldblum. And, of course, what defines him as a character is uh, that he sees before anyone else how this story is going to end. Uh, because you can't control nature, because you can't bring perfect order out of a, out of a complex system full of living things without there being chaos, uh, because of course, if you bring dinosaurs back to life, uh, bad things are going to happen. Uh, Malcolm looks ahead from the middle of the story and he sees the end. Something similar is happening in Jonah chapter two. Uh, did it strike you as strange that even though this is Jonah's prayer from the belly of the fish that has swallowed him, as we're told in verse 1 and, and reminded in verse 10, he nonetheless prays in thanksgiving to God for saving him as though it's already happened. Uh, Jonah knows, as he'll say later, that God <clears throat> is a, a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And he looks ahead and sees how his story will end with his rescue because God loves him and has called him. So to refresh our memory a bit, uh, this story, this book, begins with God calling Jonah to go and deliver his prophetic message <clears throat> to the city of Nineveh. As we find out later, uh, Jonah doesn't like Ninevites, and he doesn't want God to save them, <laughs> and, and he doesn't want to go. 
Uh, now, we're familiar with the biblical prophets not wanting to be prophets. Uh, that almost always happens. But Jonah takes things a step further and actually tries to run away from God, uh, which, spoiler alert, doesn't work. Uh, he, he gets on a ship bound for Tarshish, which is at the other end of the known world from Nineveh. So God sends a storm upon the sea uh, around the boat that Jonah's in, uh, and all of the people on the boat are praying to their gods. Jonah is asleep in the inner parts of the ship, uh, and they go and find him and say, hey man, we're sinking out here, uh, pray to your god. Uh, then they, they cast lots, roll dice basically, uh, to find out whose fault this is, um, who brought this upon us, and it's Jonah. And they say, well, thanks a lot. Uh, and who are you anyway? Where, um, what do you do? Where, where are you from? Uh, and he tells them his story. And so they say, great, uh, this guy's running away from his God, and now his God's going to kill us all. Uh, <laughs> so what do we do? And Jonah says, well, uh, just throw me overboard, um, please. This is my fault. Just throw me overboard. Uh, and they're like, well, let's not get crazy. And they keep trying to get the boat to some land, but the storm is getting worse. So they pray to God, Jonah's God, the one true God, and they say, uh, we're sorry. Please don't punish us for this, but... And they throw him overboard. Then, of course, God sends a big fish to swallow him, and that brings us to where our reading began. Jonah cannot get away from God, and he cannot stop God's purposes from unfolding. God has purposed to save Nineveh, its people, and its animals, and they need to hear what God gives Jonah to tell them. They need to hear a call to repentance, and they need to repent. Uh, God has purposed to save them because God is love, and Jonah will not stop that. And Jonah comes to know that God is love. He comes to know that God rescues people. Uh, now, he promptly forgets all that later and, and, and lashes out against God. But here in chapter 2, he has a moment of clarity. Uh, he looks ahead and sees where his story is heading toward rescue. And he also sees the difference between idolatry and true worship in verses 8 and 9. Uh, that running after anything that isn't God is the same thing as running away from God. Uh, and so, away from love. And Jonah commits himself to worshiping the one true God. <clears throat> of course, this story also looks ahead, not just to Jonah chapters 3 and 4, but to Christ, who was in the grave for three days and three nights uh, before coming out, just as uh, just as Jonah coming out of the fish where he'd been for three days and three nights meant the salvation of Nineveh, uh, so Jesus coming out of the grave where he'd been for three days and three nights meant the salvation of the world. <clears throat> and Jesus makes this connection himself in Matthew chapter 12, verses 38 and following. Uh, we read, Some of the scribes and Pharisees said to Jesus, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. But he answered them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, something greater than Jonah is here. And the story looks further ahead to our own future, uh, when God will put all things right and will rescue his creation, including us, from sin and death. So may we <clears throat> like Jonah, uh, in, in whatever our circumstances may be, give thanks to God. May we remember that God is gracious and merciful and slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. That God has purposed to save the world, 
through Christ, who was raised again, and he purposes in his great love to raise us with him.